I trained in Japan starting in uh, 1948, right after uh, World War II. And that time, really, we don't have nothing. Uh, of course, my house, the inside the house, when you rainy day, I had to use the uh, umbrella. And that type of condition. So, of course, we don't have any dojo, but I have a, uh, one of my friends, the father, knows about martial arts. So I study uh, kind of like a kendo type things, and also mixed with uh, karate and jiu-jitsu type things. So we learned that. Then uh, uh, 50s economy coming up a little bit of a better way. Then the, I find one of my uh, original sensei have a dojo. So and I went to the, his place. But problem is they don't teach the young kids. So I joined the kendo group. So I started kendo till time come up. And uh, and he said, uh, go ahead practice karate. So I started there. So kendo three days a week, karate in three days a week, to Constantly, every day, I studied there. Well, uh, Kobudo training, uh, when, uh, after the uh, competition starting, so we got to learn. So we start practice that. So then in 1962, three, uh, dojo is getting bigger, nicer. And uh, that time, uh, somehow my sensei invited Mr. Shinken Taira to the dojo. Then he lived in the dojo and upstairs. So uh, th then he told me, that you got to practice Kobudo. So I said, okay. And I don't know much about it, but he's nothing to the everyday in the, there. So I go, as soon as I finish school, I go to the uh, dojo and then he started teaching me the other stuff. And that's why I started to learn the uh, Kobudo. Uh, how to uh, help the uh, Kobudo to karate? Uh, basically, uh, kobudo is an uh, extend of your hand. So without karate training, it's a very difficult. So that's the connection there. So uh, we start doing that. Then we start more practice, practice. I have a lot of questions because uh, why don't have any system like a karate? You know, kobudo have different kinds of systems and nobody knows, you know, how you get the black belt. My sensei just gave it to me. So uh, kind of little, my question was that. And uh, then Kobudo start going up and going down. When Mr. Tyra left, my group are not practice much anymore. So to me, my responsibility to keep Kobudo same as karate, same way to grow up. Because that's what, same way it's starting, I want to keep up. So that's my uh, obligation to Kobudo. Therefore, I start doing this, and I tell everybody, Kobudo is a very important. Two reasons, one, history. One, your experience of karate. Because the karate is of the MP hand, but if you hold the weapons, it's a little different story, different feeling, see? So then, uh, about 10 years ago, I started making, uh, my friend making uh, uh, Kobudo equipment, so we started doing Kumite. What you start the Kumite, that you know you have to have all the weapons to practice, otherwise you can do it, see? So that, therefore, uh, I started doing both together. At this time, I show you Okinawan Kobudo. I have a four segment. Number one, called ball. This is the ball, or we call kon. All Okinawan weapons called kobudo, it's from uh, farmer to tool. Now, how to grab in and use the ball. First, we call no more grabbing, hon nigiri. And then also reverse, this way, gyaku nigiri and then strike. Eight. Second segment called nunchaku, 
or source con. How to use the nunchakus? Basically, nunchaku have striking and also twisting and also swinging. This is the third segment. It's called Tongfa or Toifa. It's both hand, and today also people call PR24. They use the law enforcement people, they use Tongfa. Chop and spear hand, back hand. Now, side background is basically, it's not uh, farm equipment. It basically come from Chinese monk. And this is a Chinese monk, they're martial artists, the protected temples. And then uh, these people, they made from human body. So this is a, like a human body, head, arms, and legs. So basically, strike by head, catch by hand, and then kick by foot. I started martial arts in 1956. I started in, in judo in the Air Force. Uh, but basically, uh, I started karate, Ishinu karate, in uh, 1962. And from that on, I've been in the art ever since. Well, in, in the Air Force, you had instructors, they kept changing uh, from time to time. Uh, I did judo, but I was in crash rescue in the Air Force. And what happened is I hurt myself really bad and I couldn't take the falls anymore. So I was looking for some other thing to do in the martial arts. And then I stumbled along when I got out of the Air Force, I stumbled along a ad that I seen about karate lessons. And I went down there and there was a gentleman by the name of Ed McGrath who was teaching at the school, it was American Dojo at that time. And uh, I started training there. And I started training two days a week, then it was three days a week, then it was four days a week, then I trained five days a week and competed on the sixth day. And luckily my wife put up with me because I still had, you know, two children at that time. Well, when I first started training, uh, basically all the people that I was involved with were in the Marine Corps. So they were out of the Marine Corps. Ed McGrath was a lieutenant in the Marine Corps. And so it was very, very hard training. Your, your workouts were basically two hours. You did an hour of calisthenics. We have 15 basics in our system and we did them 20 times on each side and so forth and so on. Same with our kicks. We have basically eight basic kicks when we start out. You had to do your basics in every class. Always started the same way. Then you went off into kata or fighting or self-defense, depending on what you were working at at that time. Basically what we like to do is cover a few things about the pampa. Or there are different types. This one is round. Most You see these people uh, using this for form. Uh, it's this is square, this is a kumibo, this is basically what it really looked like and you have a tendency of maybe cutting your forearms and stuff so when you wheel it, but this one is held flat against the forearm and it has cutting edges. So when I did that punch in here, when I come up, this would be cutting, 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 
cutting, and then we punch up. The reason I punch up is so the person cannot move away from the form. He has to eat the full power of the weapon. If I punch down, he's still going to feel it, but his body is going to be coming towards me, which I don't want to happen. So I always like to punch up, one, two, right? And when I flow, I want to make sure that there's something keme in that flow. So this really sharpens up when you punch. Here and he's going to side block me. As he side blocks, I'm going to strip this hand, I'm going to hit this hand, I'm going to hit this hand, and I'm going to hit his head. 